Welcome back, welders and weldettes. Today, we're gonna to make some bottle openers. So I work with a company that does some of the plasma cutting. Some stuff I cut by hand. Some stuff I farm out to a guy with a CNC table. I've had to make my home state, Wisconsin. And today we'll be TIG welding these little cutouts on there. Something like that. I'll center them up, we'll square everything, and take that on there. Uh, normally I sandblast them, they'll scale off. My sandblaster's been acting up. It's been cold, you can probably see my breath a little bit, I turned the heater off. But sandblast's acting up, so he's been soaking in white vinegar overnight. That gets the mill scale off, at least most of it. I'm still gonna hit with a scotch Bright pad and kind of polish this, hit some of the spots it didn't get, even though we're not Gonna be welding up here. I still want it to look nice and shiny. Uh, we're gonna punch some mounting holes in this, and yeah, so should be a fun project. Stay tuned. All right, so we got our pieces clamped up here. This way we can just drill a hole straight through all of them. So doing one at a time. Try to make this more efficient. Just got a little. Little wiggle in her, but I think it'll be just fine. Let's see how it goes. Perfect. Try to cut that. How nice would that be? Yeah, a little tweak. So we got our two quarter inch diameter holes drilled in there. Good enough for mounting to a wall, a fence post. Yeah. Whatever you need to. Oh yeah. I like to clamp stuff like this together so you're just drilling two holes and then just drilling two holes over and over. Because if you can be one thing, be efficient. So now I'll take a Die grinder, scotch bright pad, clean those burrs off, shine up the uh, welding side. I'll go through these, knock any little burrs off. We also have to take a burr bit and file this down. That's too thick, eighth inch thick, too thick to catch the bottle cap. So I'll clamp these in the vise and I just take a barrel burr bit and I keep going across it until it's uh, probably half, sixteenth, maybe a little less, just enough to catch. So yeah, I'm going to kick this heat back on. It is uh, seven degrees outside and not much warmer in here with that heat off.
Now, the sweet spot for these is about two inches up from the bottom. So luckily, our wrapper square is two inches, so it makes layout a little easier. And I have so much stuff in the way. All right, this keeps everything nice and square, and it's real easy. Put that there. No scribe line. So we have our, you can see this is sweating too. It's fun working in the winter. You can see we have a very faint scribe line. That's our two inches, that's where the bottom of our opener would get welded to. So I'm actually gonna take a little map gas torch. And I'm gonna warm all these up, get the condensation off of them. Then I'm gonna acetone wipe them uh, TIG welding is very, very picky. It needs bright, shiny metal, bright, shiny, clean metal. And one of the big secrets to TIG welding is cleanliness. You know, your metal's got to be clean. I'll even take the filler rod here, which is just some ER70. What do we got there? S2. I'll even wipe this down with acetone right before. Just everything clean, spotless. I have all the doors closed, I'll have the heat off, that way there's no crosswind, nothing circulating in here. And I'm not the best TIG welder. This is good practice. I've only been TIG welding on and off for a few months, mainly off. Um, but kind of self-taught. So we had to take that journey together. We'll get into more settings and things in a minute. So yeah, we'll wipe this down, preheat them a little bit to burn this condensation off. You can see everything just sweating in here. The joys of winter. Didn't think of that. Now the table's sweating. All right, new plan. Wipe my table off. Oh, yeah.
I know what you're thinking. Why aren't you using a rosebud or an oxygen acetylene torch? Because I was at my local welder supply yesterday to refill, well, exchange my oxygen and acetylene, and they are out of acetylene. Not the gas itself, the bottles they put it in. Apparently they can't manufacture bottles or not manufacturing bottles. I have to call back tomorrow to see if they have any bottles in stock. So we get the old map gas. You know, I don't even like that either. This table's three quarters of an inch thick. That's going to take forever. We're just going to wipe it. It's going to go with what you feel. All right, preheated, now my hands are cold. Like I was saying, TIG welding is very, very particular. It wants Remember when I heated those up with the torch earlier? That one's still hot. Okay. All right, now that everything's cooled down, not too bad. Everything's cooled down, wiped down, prepped, ready to go. Got our little strong hands. 90 magnet on here, we're on our scribe line ready to rock and roll. So we're using 332 ER how was it? ER 70 S2. A couple of pieces cut. Got a Millermatic 215 running about 73 amps. I do have the stubby kit from the Weld Mongler on here. Number eight cup with a gas lens. Been pretty good. I, I like this. It even has the um, the flush. I don't even know what that's called. So, yeah. Very happy with that. So a good rule of thumb. Whatever your cup size is, we're running a number eight. You know, you can't see it. It doesn't want to focus. We're running a number eight cup. So 15, 16... CFM, 100% argon. That just guy turned the tank on and it went up. I do not have a flow meter yet. So Jody from Welding Tips and Tricks, the weld mongler, you got an extra one laying around and, you know, falls off the truck, ends up over here. I'd appreciate it. But until then, um, we're just going to deal with that. There is no purge, so I will just scratch start the torch on the table to get the gas flowing quick and then I will make sure we're sitting at about 15 and that's just a good rule of thumb so yeah we're ready to go find a good spot for you guys I don't have a tinted lens to put over this. I looked, I can't find any. So you get to watch a pretty blue light. I'm only gonna do a couple of them with you guys and I'll turn this off and I'll show you the final result. I said, I am by no means an expert when it comes to TIG welding. Decent stick welding, decent MIG welding, both uh, here in my normal job, in, in the real world. But 
no, just some good practice. I'm going to attack the corners. I'll attack that side. I'll attack this side. I'll pull the magnet, and then I'll run a bead, run a bead. And we'll see what she looks like. It's a good learning experience for both of us. Here we go. All right. I'm going to check our, our flow. We'll scratch start. So that one more time. And one more time. That's sitting good. Man, if you weren't nervous TIG welding by yourself, well, the ball game when you think people are watching, if anyone's even watching. Bunch of shit on the table. Let's see. All right, so you saw me stick it. You know, it happens when you're learning. But we got two decent tacks on there. You ditch the magnet and try to run a, a bead. I'll probably go through just as much tungsten as I do filler. So I'm using uh, that red tungsten, that 2% thoriated, I believe. All right, so we had to cut that video short. I was actually having some welder problems, not just myself, but the actual machine. I started getting an error message on the screen. They are, uh, it's off now, but LCD screen there. An error message saying uh, improper input volts, which I've never seen before. This welder, I've had it for three years now. Never had a problem, never had something like that. And I kept having to turn the machine on and off to reset it. Um, so I was getting frustrated with that. My TIG weld, which was not good. Not, you can see we got, got some wormholes, inconsistent. Only went through, I don't know, three pieces of tungsten I had to sharpen. Um, the camera ended up cutting out the my phone because, you know, um, the storage was full and the battery died. 
while I was welding that first piece, which like I said, you didn't miss anything. Um, so I kept getting that error message and I thought there might be a problem with the welder. So luckily the Miller 215 multi-process, it'll do DC TIG, DC stick, and then it's a, a wire feed welder. It's a great machine up until yesterday I was having that, that issue. So I switched switch it all over, went back to wire feed, went to MIG welding, and I did a couple of them in MIG just to make sure the machine was welding good. And yeah, so I don't know if that air mesh was coming up because I kept sticking the tungsten, which, okay, that makes sense. That was, that was probably it. So I go to shut everything down yesterday, um, go in the house and just call this a day. We'll worry about, you know, we'll, we'll circle back. And I noticed on my gauge, I was looking at the wrong readings. We have CFH, we have LP. 